I think the big brand theory is kind of a misnomenclature for what you should be doing, and that's really getting down to the individual customer. And for brands that are able to do that, that's the big breakthrough for most brands, is to be personal. A brand is nothing but a promise delivered to a customer. So what you want to do is be able to have an intimate conversation with your customer one-on-one. -on -one. And for big companies to be able to do that, it's very difficult. And so, you know, events like this help us to be able to refine how we want to do it, look at what others are doing it, and then get best practices that we can practice it ourselves. Well, the first thing I tell most marketers is wake up. There's another world going on there. It's online, it's digital, it's social media, as well as a lot of other things. Now, everybody's swarming to social media right now, but social media has been around since the existence of time. It used to be called Kiwanis Club, Rotary Club, the Chamber of Commerce, and uh, Chess Club back in high school, but now we're doing it all online. So I think the key thing for marketers is to have a blended approach. You, you don't want to throw out all the old things that you were doing before, but you definitely want to start investing and in doing some of these new things. Now, a lot of people will rush, you know, head head first into everything and I don't necessarily think you have to do that so you know take your time what you do is get with other people get with experts you got a heart problem go to a cardiologist not a general practitioner in this case you know come to groups like this come to others that are doing it and say what are you doing and then how can we you know copy you if, if nothing more than that and then find out the ways you want to do it and take baby steps to be able to do it and pretty soon you'll see this stuff catches on uh, but and the other piece of advice is I'd say dedicate a certain portion of your budget to that you know, for big companies, that's one of the things that you, nothing happens unless you start spending money towards it. And so I, I would say, you know, put aside a little bit of money that says we're going to go after these kinds of things. First of all, the, you know, I, I say the mirror test is really three things. One is, is do you fog the mirror? We are proof of life. And I think for some companies, you need to step back and say, do we even fog the mirror? Do we have a product that fogs the mirror? So whether in real life or digital life or fake life, it doesn't make a difference. You know, does, is it real? Does it fog? Does it you know, steam the mirror up? And then the second one is, do I have the right people you know, looking around? Am I the right kind of leader? Because some of us are really good at what we do and not good at other things, but we're put into those jobs. So in a big, big companies and small companies, you have the right people for the right jobs. And the third mirror test is, you know, do I... Do I like what I see, you know, does it look fresh, does it look like an edgy company, does it look like the kind of company I want it to have, and those are very important for people to do. And I don't care whether you're in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, or you're in, you know, in some major town like San Francisco with a big company with lots of zeros behind it, you know, it's all the same, it's never, n nothing any different. I'd make the same decisions if I were in Sioux Falls as I would make them in, in boardrooms and in, in, in Fortune 100 companies, it's just zeros behind the numbers. When I look at online or offline, any type of advertising, the first thing that comes to my mind is what are my conditions of satisfaction? Is what are goals am I trying to accomplish? A lot of people just go online just to buy online, they're doing it, and then they realize, oh, we're supposed to be doing that for a real purpose or reason. So what are the conditions of satisfaction? You know, you, you got a customer relationship and a performer. In this case, if I'm the customer, I'm going to talk to my performer who's implementing those online campaigns. And let's be very clear about the metrics or the things that we want to dri drive. I don't, I don't want to spend a lot of time, you know, coming up with millions of metrics, but, you know, I want to drive sales. I want to run brand awareness. I want to be able to reach these people during these times so they can make peak decisions. So conditions of satisfaction are critical, and most marketers and a lot of business leaders don't take enough time to do that. I think the, the biggest thing I think the speech brought today was the fact that anybody could do this, even if you're a big company, and you would think you have lots of resources, but I will tell you it's harder in bigger companies than smaller companies because they typically aren't fleet afoot, and so they have systems and rigid structures and lots of history behind them in terms of how they do it. What we were able to do uh, through the Kodak example, as, as a primary one that I used in the speech, was being able to focus in on the fact that we could go out there and make it happen in a major way, and that other companies, you know, big or small, could do the same thing. And in essence, that's what we talked about. Brand transformation isn't just for, you know, the big companies, it's also for the small companies as well. Well, you look at the expenditure that you're going to make and then what's the value you're going to get back on the other side. So, I mean, you always want something, you know, I always, I always, you know, pull out a pen and describe it to most people like a seesaw. When you push on one side, something's got to give on the other. So when I start pushing with this, 
in doing this, what am I going to get on the other side? You know, what cause, cognitive dissonance? How am I going to move people off the fence one way, positively or negatively? And those are the things that we try to measure in terms of understanding what we're getting to. And again, it's always about conditions of satisfaction for us. We're very clear about why we're doing it and, when, and, and how we're doing it, when we're doing it, and, but what are we going to extract from it? What value will it cost for us? And sometimes that value might be we're just going to learn. You know, we're going to do it. No one's going to die. We're going to find out if this is, can catch on. Can we do it? And what, 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 we, what might we get from it? And where can we go with this a little bit later on? And for us, a lot of the things that we do, we might do it somewhere online, but then we we'll repeat it somewhere else. We step and repeat that process, and that gives us greater value. When you look at a company like Kodak, we, we went through a lot of transformation fatigue. And when you get transformation fatigue, the mood goes south on you in terms of it goes sour and and it's tough because people are tired and it's it's rough and they're always cutting and they want to grow businesses they want to do great things for customers and sometimes you know when you're making those transformation you can't always do that because you got to do the task at hand and that means getting the business back to where you need it to be in order to get ready for what you want to do and so FAST was a way for us to set up a standard operating procedure, a way in which we said we can work together. So even if we don't know each other and even if we get thrown together as a new company, a uh, new employee, and we had 60% of our people join us in new, it gave us a way to say, if you're sitting across from the table with me, this is how we operate with one another. And so it made a shortcut, a language that we could use, which made it much simpler. I mean, you hear me use terms like conditions of satisfaction and, you know, customers and performers. And those are the kind of language that we weaved into the program so that we were very clear about what we wanted to deliver, how we wanted to deliver it, who was delivering it, and whether or not we would be satisfied at the end. I think the key thing is you have, one, you surround yourself with really good people because you can't do all things to all people. I mean, everyone knows that's a saying that we've heard many, many times over. Uh, what I try to do, and I can only do what I do, is I try to reach out certainly to my customers on an ongoing basis. I'm always talking to customers. I want to be with customers. I want to visit with customers. I'd rather do that than sitting inside the corporate boardroom. Now, there are times when I have to go in the corporate boardrooms because those shareholders are our, you know, they're our shareholders and they're responsible for our, you know, our growth and our value and, and we're responsible to them as a corporate leader. So I need to check in with them as well. So I make a list of who those are basically and I check in with them on a regular basis and make sure I'm meeting those, again, conditions of satisfaction. So that's important for me to do. So you have to be very focused on it. And then, and I think that's a key word for it, is being focused, because focused in on what's my job, what do I have to deliver, how do I have to deliver it, and who am I delivering it to, and what time frame. And by doing that, that's how I stay connected. And so I, anything that doesn't meet that filter, don't want to look at it. Don't want to look at it. And in a digital world, it's changing. You know, now, I, if, I, if I can't see what you want in the screen of a BlackBerry, then I'm not dealing with it. You know, those are the kind of things you have to kind of deal, or have people who are better at it than you are, and have more patience or time or expertise and let them deal with it because that's their expertise. Uh, that's the new elevator pitch. I mean, the average attention span of an adult is eight seconds. The average elevator ride is 110 seconds. So you've got eight seconds to hook me, 110 seconds to close me. It can't be a 30-page PowerPoint slide anymore. It can't go on for 5, 10, 20 minutes. And at the end of it, I'm going, what? What do you do? It needs to be short, clear, and succinct. If Moses can do it in 10 commandments, two tablets, two bullet, five bullet points on each page, and I think anybody can do it. And that's the way I tell people they should do it as well.